This Bible study is going to be on dragons and owls in the Bible. Now, sometimes you have to understand that the Bible uses figures of speech. Now, Americans do that all the time. You ever hear a guy say, oh, that girl, she's a fox. Well, guess what? Does she have four legs? No. But figure of speech, you know? So with that in mind, let's take a look at the word dragon. But before I do, I've uh, when you look through the uh, slideshow, of the pictures that are on this video. There's a picture of what is called a stegosaurus. It is at the Angor Wat, A-N-G-O-R. Uh, a Wat is a Buddhist temple, W-A-T, and they have a carving of a what looks like a stegosaurus. So, you know, the uh, what people call dragons, in all likelihood, was probably what they, science calls today the prehistoric dinosaurs that lived billions and millions and millions of years ago. Only thing is that uh, temple, that Watt, is not millions and millions of years old. It might be thousands of years old. So where did they get the idea to carve a stegosaurus in it? Hmm, I don't know. You know, it's just like the, uh, the, the bones of the giant skeletons that they find all over the world. Um, there's groups that pay huge sums of money, and then they hide the bones. But I mean, there were, in the 1890s, 1900s, 1910s, 1920s, uh, film photography, people were taking pictures of these giant bones excavated and newspapers were reporting them. And let me tell you something. Digital photography is extremely easy to fake. I mean, after all, just look at Obama's birth certificate. Yeah, I'm one of those. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about film photography with negatives, that's a lot more difficult. And why would a newspaper fake a skeleton, a giant skeleton? I mean, they don't have a dog in the fight. You know, what do they have to gain? I mean, as a matter of fact, that helps prove the Bible would be true, talking about giants, you know? But with all that in mind, um, you know, you could take a look at the, uh, if you look up Angkor Wat, it's in Cambodia, on the Cambodian-Thailand border, and the uh, Thai people, the Cambodian people are, they're always fighting over this area because it's on a, right on the border, and sometimes it belonged to Thailand, sometimes it belonged to Cambodia, and, you know, they fight over it. But, uh, what can I tell you? All right. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 13. Now, Nehemiah and uh, Ezra, one of them was the civil ruler, the other was the priest. Uh, when the Babylonian captivity ended, and you can read about that in the book of Daniel, and in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about uh, the Lord going to, take Jerusalem into the Babylonian captivity. Uh, Daniel records parts of the De uh, Babylonian captivity. And then Nehemiah and Ezra record when they return from the Babylonian captivity after 70 years and rebuilt Jerusalem and the temple. All right, so second chapter, Nehemiah, verse 13. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, D-R-A-G-O-N, dragon well, and to the dung port. For those of you that don't know what dung is, um, look at the rear end of a cow when she is 
making a cow patty. That's what dung is. Uh, even before the dragon well and to the drung, dung port and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. So they had a well that they called the dragon well. Why? I don't know. Don't ask, because I don't know. 91st chapter of Psalms, verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. An adder is an extremely poisonous snake. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. So there's going to be a day when believers are going to trample the dragon under their foot. 27th chapter of Isaiah, verse 1. In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Levithion, the piercing serpent. Even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Huh. So the Lord's going to come one day with a great and strong sword. And that's going to happen at the second coming. So it talks about Levi Levithion, the piercing serpent. Remember that word, serpent, which is a snake. Even Levithion, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. All right. 51st chapter of Isaiah, verse 9. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Now, before I go on, this, this could probably be a study in and of itself. You know, that's the thing. The Bible's like a, a big tapestry. You know, you start looking at one thread and it leads to another thread that leads to another thread. And, you know, it would take... One time I was uh, at a job where I was driving cross-country and I bought the entire Bible on cassette. Yeah, it was in the 90s, cassettes. My daughter goes, Dad, what's a cassette? Oh, honey, that's a, a, a medium that they used to have before they had CDs. Oh, okay. You know, never mind. But, um, you know, wounded the dragon. Where do we read that? Well, you can read about that in Revelation 13. We're going to skip around a little bit. It doesn't say the dragon, but it says beast. But a dragon is a beast, right? Revelation 13, verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Uh, skip to 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Hmm. So in 51st chapter of Isaiah, verse 9, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord, awake, as in the ancient days, in the days of old, art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon. Hmm. All right. Um, remember we talked about Jeremiah. 51st chapter, Jeremiah, verse 34. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. Huh. 
So here it is, Jeremiah is comparing uh, Nebuchadnezzar to, you know, have swallowed him up like a dragon would. You know, figures of speech, people, you know. Um, let's see, 29th chapter of Ezekiel, verse 3. Speak and say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which have said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. The great dragon that lieth in the midst of his ri rivers. I wonder if they're talking about that Leviathan, the crooked serpent, that we had just read, right? Now, here's where we get to the interpretation. Well, maybe we'll, maybe, hold on. All right, so before we interpret dragon, let's take a look at the plural, dragons. 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps, A-S-P-S. -S. That's plural, an asp is a type of snake. And the difference between poison and venom is poison you drink, venom is something that's injected into your blood. A snake does not have poison, a snake has venom. There's a difference. I'm just pointing that out. Gee, sound like I went to college, doesn't it? Uh, Job, 30th chapter, verse 29. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. O-W-L-S. Huh. So here it is. I am a brother to dragons and a companion to owls. Owls and dragons mentioned together in the same sentence. 44th chapter, Psalms, verse 19. Though thou hast sore broken us in the place of dragons and covered us in the shadow of death. So here it is. Dragons are mentioned in the same sentence with death. You know, when you, gotta, when you read the context of the Bible, certain things will appear next to each other a lot. And you should pay attention to that. 74th chapter, Psalms, verse 13. Thou didst divide the sea by strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Oh, there's that reference to Libethion again. 148 Psalms, chapter 7. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all the deep, deeps. Isaiah 13:22. Ah. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Now, here's an interesting thing. 34th chapter of Isaiah. Ooh. Oh, when I mentioned that uh, I had the Bible on cassette, I, I didn't finish my point. The uh, point was, is I went through the entire Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22 on, you know, listening to it on uh, tape. You can get it on CD. Uh, there's a wonderful guy named Alexander Scorby. He does uh, excellent work, great voice. I mean, it's well made. I like the dramatized version. Um, I mean, you can get the New Testament for basically $25, you know, with shipping and everything. Um, New Testament, Old Testament together is around $75. But the, my point was, as I listened to the entire Bible from, from front, front to back, 
in basically six days. Of course, I was listening, you know, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Um, but the point is, I did it under just under a week. You know, it might have been six and a half days. I don't remember exactly. You're talking over 15 years ago. And uh, my memory's not what it used to be. But, Book of Isaiah. Some people call it the mini Bible. 34th chapter, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord. What is indignation? Indignation is extreme hatred. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. You always hear, oh, God is love. God is love. Yes, God is love. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. But those of you that reject the love of God, you're going to face the Lord's indignation and his fury. The cup of the grapes of his wrath, which is poured out without mixture, full strength. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. This sounds like the end times. They're slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Didn't we read about the uh, the armies that are destroyed when they surround Jerusalem, that their blood will come up to the horse's bridle? Wow. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. That's in the second book of Peter. That's in the book of Revelation. You know, there's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament. A lot. And, and these stupid church people, so-called preachers, ministers, whatever, that tell you, oh, don't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. Yeah, they don't want you to know this kind of stuff. They're hiding it from you for a reason. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Oh God, I love the word of God. I just love it. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. Yeah, let's go. You know what? Maybe we should go back a little further. Let's read chapter 6 of Revelation, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Now, who's the Lamb of God? He doesn't have four legs and go <laughs> no, Jesus is the Lamb of God. John, when he saw Jesus, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. No, Jesus didn't have four legs, and he was what and Mary wasn't singing about her little lamb and talking about Jesus. No. Jesus is called the Lamb of God because he sacrificed himself instead of a a four-legged lamb like they did in the Old Testament under the Levitical priesthood. Figures of speech, people. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. 
And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I beheld, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. What's a measure of wheat? Basically a loaf of bread. And what was a penny? Back in the days of the apostles, a penny was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. Basically, what this is saying is a loaf of bread for a day's wage. Does that mean that your wages are, are brought down so low to what a cost of a loaf of bread is? Or does it mean that a loaf of bread costs so much that you have to work an entire day to buy one? Either way, it doesn't matter. An unskilled laborer is going to have to work all day long for a loaf of bread. Famine, people. Jesus even warned of famine in Matthew 24. And Christians are stupid. When, the, when Jesus gives you a warning, you should pay attention to it. You know, when the Lord says, oh, there's going to be famine, well, duh, you want to feed your family, well, maybe you should uh, take preparations. But the world will say, oh, well, if you want to feed your family, take the mark of the beast. No problem. John MacArthur says if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to be saved anyways. Eternal security, once saved, always saved. The Lord's not going to throw you into hell if you take the mark of the beast to feed your family. He's going to understand. That's not what the Bible says, people. The Bible says you take the mark of the beast, you're thrown into hell. I'm paraphrasing. There is no second chance, people. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Revelation 6.6, 6, And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the field. And here's the meat. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, whose altar? The, the altar of the Lord. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. You ever hear people say, oh, soul sleep. When you die, you don't know nothing. Isn't that what you hear the Jehovah's Witnesses babble about? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried. Who cried? The souls of those that were slain for the word of God. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They're crying out for vengeance. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Listen carefully. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree, didn't we just read that in Isaiah? Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll. 
when it is rolled together. Didn't we just read this in Isaiah? Yes. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's what they're doing now. They're digging themselves bunkers. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And the answer is, none of them. Isaiah 34 and verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all the host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, as a falling fig from the fig tree. Ooh. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. What does ignorant mean? It means you don't know something. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Remember the Lord told Adam and Eve that in the day they took of the fruit thereof, they would die. Well, they lived 900 and something years afterwards. Yeah, they died in a day, a day of the Lord, uh, a day in the Lord's eyes. Now, according to my calculations and other people that, you know, have done, remember the Lord created the earth in six days and on the seventh he rested? Well, guess what? It's been approximately 6,000 years years uh, since the Lord created the earth with Adam and Eve. We're getting awful close to the 7,000 year. I don't know exactly when it is, but just remember something. On the seventh day, the Lord rested. Is that what the millennium is? The thousand years of rest? I think so. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, that's a dirty word nowadays, repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Didn't we just read that? Isaiah 34, 4, and the host of, he and the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all the hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Idumea is just um, talking about Esau and Edom, who the black Hebrews say is, is all those terrible white people. I don't think so, but, you know. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Adiamia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Do you know that the Idumeans, the Esau, Edom, are called the people of God's curse? I've got a study on that if you're interested. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats with fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. 
and the unicorns shall come down with them. I just did a thing on unicorns. Study. And the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Why is it the, day's, the day of the Lord's vengeance? Because the earth killed all his children. Didn't we just read about the, the souls that were under the altar crying a vengeance? A vengeance of, this, of those on the earth for our, you know, our blood. And when they talk about their blood, they're talking about their lives. You know, when you cut somebody's head off, there's blood, people. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah, God is love. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. We're not talking about the Zionists in Jerusalem now. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch and the dust thereof into brimstone. Remember fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah? And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. You know what pitch is? It's tar. When tar catches fire, it becomes burning pitch. It shall not be quenched day, night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Um, but the comorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also... The owl, we're going to talk about owls. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, a habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. There's those owls again. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr, S-A-T-Y-R, shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl, owl, uh, also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. Ooh. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast a lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Now, I don't know, in verse 14, we read about the satyr. In Greek mythology, a satyr was a half goat, half human. From the waist up, it was a man. and From the waist down, it's a goat. And according to Greek mythology, and I don't like using that, but that's the common thing nowadays to explain what a satyr is. Um, a satyr was a a goat demon who went to sexual excesses. Uh, perhaps you've heard of Pan. Uh, I also believe, uh, what is that? The um, Cupid or Valentine or whatever. The, they, it's along that line. But uh, when you read Let's see. Let me take a look. All right, so dragons and owls are mentioned a lot together. Okay, Isaiah 35 and verse 7. And the parched ground shall become a pool, 
and the thirsty land spring the water and the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Isaiah 43 and verse 20. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Boy, that's a dirty word. Oh, you believe in chosen people? Oh, you're a Calvinist. Oh, you're a Calvinist. That's, that's horrible. Well... Uh, unless, of course, you believe the chosen people are Jews who rejected Jesus Christ, well, then that's okay. But God forbid you believe that Christians are chose God's chosen people. Well, then you're a heretic and a Calvinist. They, they, they yell at you. But I think, personally, I think um, Christians are God's chosen people. What can I tell you? God made a choice. When election day rolls around, guess what? You cast your vote, you made a choice, people. And we chose Trump and not the witch. And if that offends you, well, I'm not sorry. All right, Jeremiah 9, verse 11. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. And I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. And that was fulfilled in the uh, destruction of Jerusalem when um, King Nebuchadnezzar came. Jeremiah 10.22 Behold, the noise of the Bruit has come, and a great commotion out of the north country to make the cities of Judah desolate and a den of dragons. Jeremiah 14, 6. The wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did pale because there was no grass. Jeremiah 49, 33. And Hazor shall be a dwelling for dragons and a desolation forever. There shall no man abide there, nor any son of man dwell in it. Jeremiah 51, verse 37. Now remember, Babylon was used as God's rod of connection, rod of correction against Jerusalem. But then they were also judged. Jeremiah 51, verse 37. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons, an astonishment and an hissing without an inhabitant. Micah 1 and verse 8. Behold, I will wait, wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the dragons and mourning as the owls. Malachi 1 and verse 3. Matter of fact, let's go read uh, the entire, well, I don't know about the entire uh, chapter of Malachi, but let's, let's go to verse 1. Now, this is the word of God, Old Testament people, minor prophets, Malachi verse 1, 1. The burden of the word of the Lord by Israel, by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob. Now, Esau is called Edom. And he lived in the land of Idumea. So Esau, Edom, and Idumea is the same people. Okay? Uh, just like America and USA and US, United States, all means the same thing. You know? Verse 3. Okay, well... I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet you say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. And of course, the black Hebrews will tell you, you whitey, you're the, 
you're Esau, and God hates you, and we're going to kill you. Verse 4, Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and rebuild the desolate places. Oh yes, they sure did. It's called Jerusalem. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Doesn't sound like, that don't sound too good, does it? No. All right, so what is all these dragon things? Well, we're going to take a look. All right, turn to Revelation chapter 12. Now, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Now, if you want to know the interpretation of this, you have to look to Joseph's dream. You know, Joseph, the guy that was sent to Egypt um, in the book of Exodus, he had a dream. The sun, the moon, and the 12 stars. The sun was um, Jacob. The moon was his uh, mother. And the 12 stars... Well, that was him and his 11 brothers, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so this is talking about Israel. Uh, you know, the thing is, Genesis, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, the Bible is a book about Israel. And if you think it's about the, the Antichrists that call themselves Jews over in the Middle East that curse Jesus, uh, you know, you're free to believe that all you want. But personally, I believe the Bible. I think the Bible is a book about Israel. I think Israel accepted Jesus. I think Israel built the churches. I think the, Israel printed the Bibles, including the New Testament. I think Israel crit, print, uh, built the, the, uh, the old-time Bible colleges. But that's just me. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, the twelve tribes, people. And she, being with child, cried, travailing of her, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. You know, it's funny. Why red? Why not blue or green or yellow or teal? Do you know the communists were called reds? And the communists murdered millions and millions and millions of Christians. They don't even know how many. A conservative estimate would have been about 50 million over in Russia. Reds. But all you ever hear about is the six million that got killed by Adolf Hitler. That's all you ever hear about every every week. Six million, oy vey, they were murdered by the evil Hitler and those evil Germans. But you don't hear about the, uh, the Reds that murdered all the Christians. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did, did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Isn't that what happened when Christ was born? Didn't Esau, I mean um, Herod, by the way, Josephus, a Jewish historian under in Roman times, said that King Herod was an Edomite of Esau. 
didn't King Herod, when he talked to the wise men, didn't he try to find out, oh, Bethlehem, huh? And he killed all the children under, what was it, two years old or three years old? He killed all the children under two years old, trying to kill the Christ child. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Who's going to rule with a rod of iron? You don't know? Well, let me tell you. You can read about it in Revelation chapter 19, but we're only going to read verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. The word of God, people. The sharp two-edged sword. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Who are they talking about? Christ. Verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, if you think the, will, uh, the woman's the Jews, well, that's up to you. But I think the woman's the church. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That old serpent. Didn't we just read about the old serpent, Levithion? That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Ah, the Bible interprets the Bible. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So the Bible tells you, the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. You know that serpent that... the that that deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. Here you go, people. Here you go. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. It wasn't a talking snake sitting, hanging from an apple tree going, he shall not surely die. No. It was probably one of the most beautiful creations that God ever made. Probably one of the most Hans probably the most handsome angel that God ever made. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which was talking to Eve, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren. That's what... Uh, Satan means accuser for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death hmm the blood of the lamb the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and for the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times, two more years, and half a time, 
That's a half year. So that's three and a half years where she is nourished for a time and times and half time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that she that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth, angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep which keep the commandments of God, which keep the commandments of God, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now remember, the dragon casts out of his mouth waters against the woman. What are the waters? Revelation 17 and verse 15 tells you. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. Ooh. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that she might, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. What's happening in the United States, in Europe, South Africa? The dragons cast out a flood of satanic heathen aliens that hate Jesus Christ. Isn't that what's going on in Europe? They've got a flood of Africans. They've got a flood of Muslims. Isn't that happening now in our country? You've got a flood of all these South American countries, these, these aliens. Verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of her mouth. An earthquake, people. There's going to be an earthquake that's going to swallow up this flood. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. All right, we're going to skip around a little bit. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast, remember where we were talking about a beast? And the beach which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And we're going to talk about, And they worshipped the dragon. We're going to talk about those, uh, remember the owls and the dragons are always mentioned together, it seems, in the Bible. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast. Uh, Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Revelation 16 and verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Three unclean spirits. Ooh. So what are these uh, unclean spirits? What, what's, what's up with that? You know, these are satanic you know, these are satanic things, right? Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day 
of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. People, remember the souls under the altar that died for their faith? They were all given white robes. Well, you want to make sure that you're given one of you're given a garment, a, a white robe, because you don't want to walk in naked. And we're not talking about flesh naked. We're talking about your sins to be covered. And then it says, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Okay, Revelation 16 and 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the raw, uh, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Boy, that's going to be one heck of an earthquake, huh? And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. I'm uh, not sure what a talent is. I believe it's about 60 pounds, which is about oh, 25 kilos. So, now, and then in Revelation chapter 20, we read the following. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads and in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. See, in the days of John, he said this is the first resurrection. And this is after Christ returns. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So Satan the beast and the false prophet are going to be tormented 
day and night, forever and ever, in the lake of fire. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, that's Christ, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. See, you're not saved by your works, but what you do is proof of what you believe. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, we're going to be, I'm going to make this a part two. It's already been an hour, and we're going to study about owls. Okay, we pretty much did, we read every verse in the Bible about dragons and owls, right? Now, we're going to do a little side study on owls. And uh, so stick with me, part two. Um, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ, who's going to come one day in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and rule the nations with a rod of iron. In Jesus' name, amen.